everybody, I'm Bree the Plant Lady checking in with a weekly garden tour. I'm actually making this video a day early because we have some not awesome weather in the forecast, but today was beautiful. It actually got to like almost 70 and I took advantage and did a lot of laundry and I have all these blankets hanging out in the sun and it occurred to me I have a clothesline, but it's just so easy to toss them on the back porch. Plus the cats benefit Cubby's been hanging out for hours, you know, with the added comfort of an extra blanket. But I've gotten some things accomplished the last few days, so let's just uh, take a walk around and see how everything's looking now that we are in the middle of February here in Central North Carolina Zone 7. First thing to note, look at the sun. It's not completely dark until like 6.30 now, so we're really getting more daylight. That motivates me. Warm days and sunshine are like 100% my motivation. So I did take some time this week and I cut back all the cold damaged snapdragons. I think they look pretty good. I think it's important to get that necrotic material off so that what is there has the opportunity to flush. And I cut back some of the Ms. America mustards. And of course, we, we vacuum the pool weekly. We do keep it chlorinated. Even in the winter, this prevents, you know, algae buildup. Um, this bed that I seeded last week, that's <laughs> Sophia being extra cute in. None of the seed that I sowed last week is germinated yet, but we have really nice warm temperatures coming middle of next week and I bet a lot more germination will occur um, at with another couple of days where we're going to be you know in upper 60s close to 70. Overall I think the cleanup that I've done definitely was an improvement um, from the cold damage and you can see you know, good winter interest. And of course the garlic just never fails. Over here, you can see leeks that were planted a year ago are starting to grow. And around them are um, celery. This is celery plants. And I moved the grain experiment this week. So I'll show you that. It's actually remarkable what just two days in more sunlight has done. This is definitely too shady through the winter. Um, it's such a practical place, but oh, you guys, look. There's poppies germinating. I'll have to check back on the video that I did this in. I think that it was around New Year's that I direct sowed poppies in these four bags of soil cube. But this really has not gotten any direct light all winter long, but you can totally see poppies germinating. So I'm excited to grow poppies in containers this year and see how they do. Overall, there's actually been a lot of seed germination this week. The warmer temperatures have made a world of difference. And as we walk along here, these borders that I did, again, right around New Year's, they're all starting to germinate. I laid these cattle, pants, cat, cattle panels down to help prevent the cats from digging in here but you can see all of those are poppies germinating so this is going to be spectacular the key now is you know to make sure they don't dry out so i've had a lot of people saying that their poppies like got to this stage and then they disappeared and i have a feeling they must have gone through a dry period um i do not have an easy way to irrigate over here but I guess I could hook some hoses up and hook up to that house to get this irrigated if necessary. The good thing is it's still winter and uh, we have a lot more rain in the forecast. So I don't need to water right now, but I do need to keep my eyes to make sure that none of the freshly germinated seedlings get too dehydrated. So look, he's right on the edge of the panel fence. See, they'll walk over it, but they don't seem to like to dig as much. Cubby, move along. Move along, Cubby. Cubby, move along. Cats don't listen. 
<laughs> and see, look, right on the other side, there he is. He's digging right on the other side of it. And now he's gonna go to the bathroom for you. That's, that's great. And this is a great interspecific hybrid whose name is escaping me right now. I don't, I think it might be Ivory Prince or I might be wrong. Um, I bet there's a label somewhere, but I'm not gonna go digging for it. But it sure is pretty. And these are also great for floating arrangements. I just always forget about this clump. Now, last year I went to Pine Knot. I'm gonna go again, I hope, next weekend. No, yes, next weekend. I bought these last year from Pine Knot. Actually, you know, all these. And they're doing really well. And look, this one has a flower bud. So I'm excited. And I got this epimedium from there. And here's another one. This is Pippa's Purple. Isn't that cute? So yeah, I wanna add to the collection. And um, you know, I just love Pine Knot. One of my favorite camellias is a starting to bloom. This is Tama Americana, and it is so striking. It will open much bigger, and these are nice big flowers. So happy those buds didn't get damaged. You know, unfortunately, the Nucio's cameo over here was in full bloom when it got cold, and all the flower buds kind of dropped off. into the woodland and look at that sun oh golly i love longer days crimson candles looking very impressive starting to really show off i did get the camellias oiled yesterday so i should have killed all the scale it's looking good I'll have to keep you updated on that. That video on how to oil camellias will go up tomorrow. You can see the Edgeworthias aren't quite in full bloom because you know when they're in full bloom, they kind of nod upright and all of the flowers open. So there's not this little tight center, but they're, you know, every week they're, they're making progress and I just get so much joy from these. This is, of course, Edgeworthia chrysantha. This is the cultivar snow cream. Over here is what I call Edgeworthia papivora. And you see it's much, much farther behind. You see only one flower open, much smaller flowers, flower st smaller stems, smaller stature overall, and a little later to bloom. So this little corner is kind of cute. You see there's Rhodia there, and then this is um, another Edgeworthy. I think this is Gold Rush, and a great plant for wo woodland, wetland, wetland, woodland is Acarus gramineus, and that's this. Also planted in that huge clump over there. Another plant that's really thrived. It doesn't look like anything now, but it's this white giant calla lily. And last year, you know, it had blooms that were taller than me. But the real reason I wanted to show you this little section, someone was asking me about this Aspidistra. And, you know, I don't think I'd ever had a label, so I don't know the cultivar name. But it is wonderful, and I forget about it. But, you know, Aspidistra, cast iron plant, is, well, it's just tough as nails. The animals leave it alone. It's also really nice as a cut foliage element for flower arrangements. But at the base of that is a really fabulous double hellebore. But you see, I had another question about varieties that are more upright, and there are some, but I don't know whether I just always think they're too expensive and don't buy them, but all of the new ones that I buy are still kind of facing to the ground. So this is why it's so nice to float them because you can actually enjoy the flowers when they're floating in water, you know, looking up to the sky. So I'm definitely gonna collect these. I know I'll get more enjoyment having them, you know, outside my kitchen door than having them back here at the shed where I can hardly see them. Well, the Giant Edge Worthia is still kind of at the same stage as the others. Not quite fully open, but open enough to be super fragrant. 
and I continue to use these in floating flower arrangements and as cut stems. This is the time that I try to take advantage of using the branches for their fragrance inside, but to also make sure that I keep this a viable walkway because this is like my work zone. Um, and yeah, I, I, you know, I didn't, I didn't intend for this Edgeworthy to, to live here. It's just rooted through a pot. Um, so this is just a, an easy kind of maintenance solution. Just prune it, enjoy the branches in arrangements, and then it's not really in the way. I cannot believe how much these have grown in the two days that they have been here with more sun. It's just night and day difference. Holy smokes. Wow, that is amazing. So this is all the different varieties of grain that we're growing at Johnson Nursery. And we do have dates set and I need to look online to see if the program descriptions and registration and stuff is up yet. I will definitely post that in upcoming videos so that you can get more information about the grain experiences we're gonna offer. I can tell you the cats are excited. Little Babe loves to chew on grain and she happens to like it when it's freshly germinated. And of course she has her buffet of barley here. More barley back here in this crescent planter and then more here. I just think it's obvious why I love grains. I just think their winter interest is phenomenal and I think everybody should grow them. Quite simply, they're a wonderful container plant. Even if that's all you're growing it for, it's totally a valuable element in the landscape. Well, you can see there's some color showing on a daffodil. So that's inspiring. I don't have a huge daffodil collection, but I sure do love them. I think I need to incorporate more bulbs into this garden. And I have lots of hellebores to harvest. The warm weather has definitely made it so that their flowers are opening and they're really putting on pretty displays. Again, I enjoy them more in my floating arrangements and I know they won't seed around that way. You can see not a lot going on here on the north side. Um, some camellias that aren't quite open. This is royal velvet. And over here, showing some color, that is October Affair. That's a really spectacular flower, so I'm excited to get some new blooms. This thing I love about hellebores, or uh, about camellias. I still need to come and um, mow down like the phlox and chrysanthemums and, and stuff in different beds. I just, I can't get the lawnmower started, so I need David to be home. I wish that I wish I could get a pool start lawnmower to work, but I can't. The direct seeded lettuce out here is rocking. You know, it was a little bit damaged, but it's totally bounced back. And again, this seed bed is doing really well. It's going to be a beautiful display. And that bed out front doesn't look like anything, but I know from experience it's going to be remarkable. But boy, oh boy, does it ever go through a boring phase. But you can see, I planted several hundred daffodils all along the edge of this bed, and they're all germinating, or all growing, not germinating. So this will be a spectacular show. And of course, daffodils are perennial, reliably perennial here. So unlike all the tulips that I've planted in this bed over the years, I can count on these daffodils coming back. For the long haul. So my favorite strawberry still looking amazing. The cats are really going to be excited when those boxes get opened. That is Fancy Feast. A variety that they've been out of for a really long time that my cats really love. Seafood pate. Now I was jonesing to fix up these pots because I think they look really ugly. But I think I'm going to wait and, well, I don't know what I'm going to do. I need to go shopping. But it's tricky to go plant shopping right now because a lot of the stuff would be coming out of greenhouses and it won't necessarily be hardened off to plant outside. 
So you have to just be like really logical about shopping in the middle of February. It's best not to. Um, of course, the barley wall. Amazing. Amazing. Preston was here last night and I was just, I'm so glad that he made this suggestion to do a monoculture of barley in that screen because I think it's so effective and beautiful. See, I have a, an empty vessel, so that's where the hellebores will go. And overall, the garden is looking good. It's, it's neat and tidy. I had some time to do some weeding and it's just been such a treat to have warm weather for a few days in a row and longer days. It's really nice to have spring ahead. I hope you enjoyed today's weekly garden tour. It's been just such a pleasure to have, you know, the first round of fake spring. We have like five or six fake springs here in North Carolina. And I have a big week ahead. I, I start traveling, making up for events that were canceled in 2020. And the NC State Landscape Design class is coming out to take measurements and get ideas for drawing up the next door property. So there's gonna be so much to share with all of you in the you know upcoming months, especially as we get warmer, the days get longer, and we get to play outside even more. And I thank you all so much for your interest and support and for tuning into these videos. And um, I look forward to sharing another update next week right here from my Zone 7 Central North Carolina Garden. Thanks for watching, everybody.